Hello, welcome to my channel, another bibliophile reads. My name is Greg, and today I'm going to be giving a sort of brief mini book tour of my New York Review Books classics. This is a publisher that I really like. The, the paperbacks are of an excellent quality. Uh, physically, you will you will just enjoy the how well made these books are, and I really enjoy their selection because they have a wide variety of books to almost anyone's taste. Whatever kind of book that you like, you will probably find a couple of different books in this publication series that you will enjoy. So I'm not going to show you every book that I have because that will take too long. But I'm going to give you the highlights, and I'm going to start with some nonfiction. This is Mohammed by Maxime, what's it called, the Roderson. He is a Marxist, and he is writing a biography of Mohammed. It is translated from the French. Now, I have not read this yet, but... I'm sort of interested. How would a Marxist interpret Muhammad? Got to read it to find out. Pages from the Goncourt Journals by Edmund and Jules de Concourt. This is basically diaries and journal entries from two brothers from the, the 19th century. It is translated from the French. Again, this is um, not a book that I have read yet, but I saw it on sale at a used bookstore. You know, it was like four bucks, and um, these, these paperbacks are just so lovely. I bought it. I, I do want to read it someday. Not the top of my list, but it is a good example of the depth and kind of books that you can find at the New York Review Book Classics. Now, here's a book that I have read and I really kind of enjoy this. This is On Being Blue, A Philosophical Inquiry by William H. Gass. This is just a man's musings on the color blue. And um, what kind of ideas he can get from the color blue. There are some really great written passages in here. I really enjoyed this. This is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. He's very highly literate, um, possibly too much of a fancy pro stylist for some people, but I enjoyed it. Diary of a Man in Despair, and this is by Frederick Reck. He was a man in Nazi Germany who did not want to be a Nazi, and he was keeping a secret diary of his um, opposition to Nazism. Do you want to know how well it ends for him? I bet you can guess a good look into what it would be like to live in a fascist regime. The Bog People, Iron Age Man Preserved by P.V. Glob. It's translated from the Dutch. Um, in England and the, the parts of the, 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 the Netherlands and Sweden, there are marsh bogs where Iron Age people are preserved. These bodies are so well preserved that when they are discovered, homicide is usually called because they believe these bodies are recently dead. In reality, they've been dead for a thousand years. And it is how these bodies are discovered what they can glean from these bodies. And he has a very interesting idea because most of these people found in these bogs did not die of natural causes. A very fun nonfiction book. They also give um, a lot of translated books. That's really something they do very well. I'm showing this. This is Anniversaries by Way Johnson. It comes in two volumes. It was originally published um, in four volumes over many years. It is translated from the German. It is 
fiction told in the form of a diary of a German woman living in New York City. I have read the, the first published volume. I thought it was fascinating. Um, altogether, this, this one novel comes to something like um, 1,600 pages. I will eventually try to read the entire novel, but it, it takes some commitment. Here is a collection of short stories from Argentinian writer, um, The World of the Speechless by Julio Ramon Roberio. Um, and they were great little short stories, you know, set in Argentina. And um, check them out. I enjoy them so much. Now, here is a novel translated from the French. It has sometimes been compared to William S. Burroughs' Naked Lunch. Now, the, the title has not been translated into English. It is the French original. Um, it is More Vageni, or something along those lines. The author is Paul Laforge. Um, it is a pseudonym. Now, this title, if translated into English, comes out to something like Death Vagina. Uh, it is a wild and crazy book. Definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but if you like your, your, your books kind of wild and crazy, you might enjoy this. Here is a book, uh, Tyrant Banderas by Ramon del Valle Inclán. This is, a, again, a Latin American novel. Um, it was sort of written on a bet with a um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, uh, who was the other one, um, Augusto Ro Bastos, and another fellow who I can't quite remember. And all these um, Latin American authors got together and they said, let's write books about Latin American dictators. So if you want to know about life in a Latin American dictatorship, this is one interpretation. Malacroix by Henri Bosco. This is apparently a very well-known French novel in France. Um, he was uh, nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature many times. Um, he ended his life, uh, his life ended around World War II, a little bit afterwards. Um, but this novel was only translated um, in 2020. So it took a long time to get into English. And it is the story of a man who inherits an island in France on a river and about his life on the river. It's very whimsical, but very enjoyable. Now you also get some big English novels. Here is a woman. This is Olivia Manning. This is actually six novels. There are two trilogies about Britain during World War II. These are not books that I have uh, read yet, but again, it shows how much depth of different kinds of novels you will find in the, the New York Review Book Classics. Anyone familiar with my channel will recognize this. This is J.R. by William Gaddis. Um, it is probably my favorite novel that I have read in the, the past five years. That's not a reread. It was originally published in the 70s and won the, the National Book Award. This novel has no chapter breaks. Um, when scenes change, it just changes paragraph. It is about 90% unattributed dialogue, very few just passages of descriptions. So you have to be paying very close attention to who is speaking. But as a novel of almost all dialogue, it really works very well. On the surface, it is the story of an eighth grader who uh, amasses a fortune in um, bad stocks, but it appears to be that this boy, no one knows he's a boy because he only communicates by phone, 
is a vast millionaire. Of course, he's, he's millions of dollars in debt because he's buying bad stock and bad companies. But it's absolutely hilarious and absolutely br brilliant. It is a poignant critique of capitalism during the 70s. Another type of book that you will find is Fat City. This is Leonard Gardner. This is sort of a brief and brutal story of a man who was a boxer. He wants to get his uh, fame to claim, his, his fame to life as a, as a boxer. Unfortunately, life does not quite work out to his um, advantage, and his fame really isn't all that great. So it is um, sort of a very sad and poignant story of a man trying his hardest to succeed and really not getting very far. They also do wonderful old crime novels. In a Lonely Place by Dorothy B. Hughes. This is a story of Los Angeles in the 40s. It is just after World War II. The man's name is Dix Steele. He was a fighter pilot, and he's trying to be successful in life. And um, you can imagine that he's not quite as successful as he wants to be. And he's thinking, you know, crime should pay. And does crime pay? Well, you probably know the answer to that. But this is a really good crime novel written by a woman. They also have crime novels translated from the French. This is Nada by Jean-Patrick Machette. He is one of the most famous French crime novels. And this one is a good... I really enjoyed this because... um. This is the story of a, a gang of terrorists who um, think they're going to get their way. And do they get their way? Well, you know things are going to go all cattywampus in the end. And um, again, he, he does this, this crime novel in a way that you, you're, you're with these people who you know are not good people, but you are going along with the story and you're really enjoying the story. And when everything goes wrong, it's just the way it has to be. Nightmare Alley by William Lindsay Gresham. This is the story of a con man. And, you know, con men are, are always looking for the mark. They're always looking for the way to make that buck and get to, get to that big success. And um, this con man, well, he's not quite getting there. And then he, he joins up with a, a traveling um, sideshow. And things just get worse from there. Because, of course, it's a crime book. You know there's going to be some murder. And science fiction is also represented. This is Modran by David R. Bunch. This is a, a series of short stories about the far future where you have these sort of uh, enclaves. And um, the first story in this collection was originally published in Harlan Ellison's science fiction uh, anthology, Dangerous Visions. Um, and the author just continued telling stories in this future. Now, I have only read the original short story published in Dangerous Visions, but I need to get to this someday because um, it's, it's classic science fiction that um, a lot of people don't get to. And another science fiction book that I want to read that I have not read yet, um, and this is Tell Ulia by Vladimir Sorokin. This is a science fiction novel translated from the Russian. Um, in the future, apparently, um, things go wrong. Um, as they say, um, the future is a devastating holy war between Europe and Islam, and things head back towards the Middle Ages. In technology. So something I really need to get to someday. And last but not least, 
you are going to get some poetry. Um, this is Gold by Rumi. This is a modern translation by a woman who actually knows the language that um, Rumi wrote in. A lot of translations of Rumi are people who do not understand the language. The poets are just um, reinterpreting different poems and different translations into new verses. At least uh, the, the most common translation of Rumi is like that. But this woman actually knows the language. Um, it is a short selection. You can actually look her up on YouTube. She has a very small channel. Not only she is she a good translator, but she is a good singer because Rumi was meant to be sung. And she sings it in the original, was it Farsi? And she has a beautiful voice. And even though I don't speak a word of Farsi myself, watching her sing is actually really lovely. And reading this book is absolutely fantastic. And that is just a short selection of what I have in the New York Review Books Classics. I hope this will pique some people's interest to go out and seek whatever type of books they like in this publisher's line. Thank you for watching and keep on reading.